Hey, hi. Welcome back to our Cisco SD1 course. In this video, we will bring up a vBond and vSmart VM in our ESXi server. Let's assign an IP address to this vBond and vSmart OOB so we can easily access them via SSH in later sections whenever needed. Let's get started. Just a moment. The playlist for this complete Cisco SD1 course is available in the description box below and also here in the cards. To encourage me, please do like, share and subscribe. Also, hit the notification bell icon so my effort will reach you on time. We will start off with spinning up the vbond vm which is the ova file which i have already downloaded in my esxi server and then follow that up with editing the vcpu and ram if required and also add a vnic as per the requirement then we'll go ahead and power on the vbond get into the console and assign an ip address for remote access to the vbond let us get into the esxi server and start spinning up the vbond I am in my VMware ESXi server. Uh, we do have our Jumpbox, GNS3 and the vManage which we brought up in the earlier video. I'm going to click on create register VM and click OVA file deployment. Next. The name I'm going to give is vBond. And I'm going to browse to the file. I have the file in downloads, my docs, image files. Here it is the edge image. If you remember, I have told you in the previous video that uh, we have to use the Viptala edge router, which is the V edge router image for spinning up a vBond. There is no separate vBond image available. Okay, let's keep going here. Let me click next. I'm going to use the only available data store. So let's click next. In terms of the VM network, I'm not going to do any changes here. I have told you this already in my previous videos. I do run a flat network in my lab and uh, i'm going to keep this as thin and remove power on automatically click next validate the setting once i think we are good here let me click finish so the device have started to upload here it will take some time for the device to get uploaded uh, meanwhile if you remember i have told you that i'm not going ahead with cisco recommendation since this is my lab so I always go ahead with cisco recommendation if you are doing this in your production if you see the upload is almost completed let's give it a couple of seconds yeah so the upload is completed now i'm just going to edit these values a bit so let me get into the settings page okay cpu i'm going to leave as 4 and uh, memory let it be 4 hard disk let it be 10 gb this is for the os if you remember in vmanage we do have added an extra hard disk but that is not the case for vbond or vsmart we don't need an extra hard disk because uh, vbond or vsmart is not going to run any statistics collection and in terms of the network adapters let it be all in vm network which is the default uh, vlan yep i think we are good here we don't need to do any changes so let's save this again i'm going to power this on it will take a couple of minutes to power on i'm going to pause this recording and come back once the device is powered on Okay, let me get into the console of the vbond, right click, console, open browser console. I have maximized this console, let me try getting into the vbond admin. Okay, if you see here, the system is still initializing, we have to give it a couple of more minutes. Okay, if you see here, it's allowing me to get in now, the default username password is admin admin. Let me try again. Yeah, so it's prompting me to change the password. I'm gonna enter a new password. Yep, we are into the box now. If you see the host name itself is VH, right? We will circle back to this as we already discussed. We are just going to bring up the vbond and vsmart and assign them a out of band management IP in this video. And in the later videos, we will come back to these devices, including vManage, and start provisioning them to join the overlay. So for now, let me first check the interfaces available. Okay. If you see here, we do have Gigi 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2 and eth 0. And uh, eth 0 is already in VPN 512. So let me show this. Show run VPN 512. If you see here, VPN 512 already have Ethernet 0 interface assigned. So what I'm going to do here is get into VPN 512 interface eth 0 and this is the interface which I'm going to use for management. So I am going to assign 192.168.0.52 in this case and the subnet mask is 24. 
no shutdown and uh, i have told you in the previous video i don't need a default route since my jump box my laptop everything is in the same vlan but in ju just in case if you want to add a default route this is how you have to do so zero zero slash zero and then the gateway so just for example if it is dot one this is how it's going to be so let me delete this in my case and let's do a commit and quit okay let me do show interface eat zero if you see the interface has the ip and also it's up up i'm going to quickly do a ping test ping vpn 512.192.168.0.1 you see here we are able to reach to the gateway which is my home router okay so i think we are good here let me get off the console and bring up my solar putty and then we'll try to get into the vh from there which is actually a v mount sorry okay here i am in my solar putty if you see 192.168.051 that's for our v manage which i have created in the previous video i'm going to create a new session this time the ip will be 192.168.0.52 and i'm going to try ssh to that yes i'm successfully able to connect yep i'm into the box now So if you see here, gig 0, 1, gig 0, 2 are also available. And also we have E0, that is the one we have used for management access. And as I have told you in the previous video, gig 00, 0 already got an IP since I am running a DHCP service in my home router. Ignore this for now. We will circle back and change the tunnel interface configurations once we are in that video. Okay, I think we are done with vbond bring up here. We will start spinning up our vSmart now. To spin up a vSmart in the ESXi, the steps are very similar to vBond. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload the OVA file, vSmart OVA file, which I have already downloaded from software.cisco.com. And then we will edit the vCPU and RAM if needed, add extra NIC if needed, mostly the NIC, right? Um, in my case, uh, since this is lab, we don't need more than two NIC at any given case. If it is production and if you have a different requirement, you may need to add extra VNIX. That is the only scenario where you will opt to add VNIX. But in general, uh, vManage comes up with uh, three VNIX, the vManage VM, right? The OVFL which you're bringing up, that comes up with three VNIC. And uh, vBond, as you saw, it comes up with four VNIX. And one is for ETH0 VPN 512, and the three gigi interface will go under VPN0. Whereas in vManage, all the Ethernet interfaces will go into VPN0. We have to move it to VPN 512. Same goes for vSmart as well. I think it will come up with two or three VNIX. Both will go into VPN0. So let's bring up the VM and we'll validate. Once we power on the vSmart, we have to assign the IP. So that's the target for this lab. So let's start here. Okay, I'm back in my ESX. Let me close this vBond. So we manage vbond already. So let's click on register vm ova file. Next, the name I'm gonna use is vsmart. Let me browse through the file. Here it is, vsmart image. So vsmart does have a separate image, and we are bringing up 26.2 version of vsmart. And if you would have noticed, vh is also 26.2, which is the vbond, right? Let's click next. I'm gonna use the same data store next. VM network, I'm going to leave it to be the flat network. Power on automatically, I'm going to remove for now. And disk provisioning, it's going to be thin. And let me finish. Okay, here if you see vSmart is uploaded successfully. Let me right click, edit settings. Okay, by default, it have taken two vCPU, four GB of RAM, 10 GB of hard disk space, two Vnix here. So that means when we get into the vSmart via console or via the SSH, we are going to see two interfaces and um, both are going to be in VPN 0 as I told you. We will change one to VPN 5 and 2 and keep using that. And in this case also we don't need extra hard disk as I told you already only vManage does need extra hard disk. Let me click save and uh, let me power this on. Let's get into the console of this box. Okay here we are. We are able to see the prompt now. Let me try. Yeah. So system initializing, right? So we have to give it some time. I'll see you at the other end when this is ready. Okay, here you see it's allowing us to get in. So let me give the username, password, admin, admin. I'm gonna set a new password. Yep, we are in now. Let's check for the interfaces. We see ETH0 and ETH1. And um, 
Let us put ETH0 into VPN512. ETH0 have already taken a DHCP IP from my home DHCP server. I'm going to remove that and assign a static IP. Let me get into the config T. First thing is let me get into VPN0 and remove that interface from VPN0. And let's get into VPN512, put the interface into VPN512, assign him an IP of 192.168. Um, I think I have planned 53. So, yeah, no shutdown. I don't need a default route. Let me commit. Let me quickly validate from here. Here you go. Yeah, it's fine now. Okay, let me get into my solar booty. Okay, here I am in my solar booty. Let's get into this. Create a new session 192.168.0.53. Okay, create. Yes, we are able to successfully SSH. Let me try getting in. Interface. Okay, we do have one interface uh, available, which is ETH1, which we'll use for the tunnel configurations uh, in the later videos. Okay, just a quick recap of our lab status. We have spun up vManage, vBond, and vSmart instances in our lab, which is in my ESXi server and we have also assigned them a management IP. For vManage, we are able to SSH and also get into the GUI and for vBond and vSmart, we are able to successfully get into the SSH. So from the next video, we'll start configuring vManage, vBond and vSmart and then we will establish control connections between them and also there is one more important step which is uh, certifying them. We'll also see how to certify them using our enterprise CA. If you remember, that is uh, an XCA software which we have already installed and built in my gem box, right? Okay, we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching the video. Hope it was informative. Do comment below for any queries or suggestions. The playlist for this complete Cisco has given course is available in the description box below and also here in the cards. If you want to encourage me, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you think some of your friends or colleagues will find my content or channel useful, do share and also do not forget to hit the notification bell icon.